How much of your heart does God have? How much of your heart does he purchase, has he obtained of yours? Is there over in a, in a small section, you know, we, uh, we have our closets and sometimes we throw junk in the corners. Oh, y'all don't do that anyway. <laughs> and, and, you know, we'll, we'll shove stuff in the corners till we have time to get it straight, right? But I just ask you today, is God in all of your corners? Even in the junky places. Because see, it's easy to have God in those, those times when we're at church and everybody can see us. But what about the junky places of your closet? What about those things, those sins that so easily beset you that you don't want anybody else to know? Is he there? The Bible says, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. You girls can sit down, but keep your mics ready. Trey, keep playing. The Bible says, create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord. And renew a right spirit in me. Can I tell you today, that's not a one-time event. When God creates a clean heart in me, it, 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 it's every day for me. It's like, God, I, you know, I had a bad attitude. I know you never get a bad attitude because you're perfect. But sometimes, Candy, I get bad attitudes. Uh, sometimes I say wrong things. Uh, sometimes my mouth speaks before my heart. I know y'all not guilty of any of that, but... But sometimes stuff happens. Come on, somebody say stuff happens. Sometimes stuff happens. And so every day of my life, I'm, God created me a clean heart. God, I want my ways to be pleasing. I don't always live there. But I want my ways to be pleasing to you, oh God. I want everything I do. In every word I say to look like you. Because John, 1 John 4, 7 says, As he is, so are we in this world. So I want to make sure I represent you. I mean, maybe you do every day. And maybe you, you're just, you've got that word. Jesus said, uh, you know, we're in perfection. Well, I'm, I'm still striving for that. But I make room. Did you know if I'm going to make room for somebody, if, if you said, hey, can I, I need to spend the night at your house and, and, and maybe I only have a one-bedroom house and, and you come and you say, I, wanna, I, I need to stay with you if you don't mind, i got to somehow a torch and make room. I've got to figure out, okay, am I going to buy a blow-up bed? Am I going to uh, uh, make room on the couch? Is the couch big enough? i I, I got to find, i got to make preparation to make room. You know, when you make room for him, it takes an act. I have to do something. I have to put myself in position. I have to know that God, every area of my heart, even the junky areas, God, you got them. You know, God will love you in your mess. Come on, there's some of you today, I don't know how God can love me. I, I, get, I get messages all the time. I've, I've done so much wrong. How could God ever use me? How could God ever love me? And you know the great thing about God is He's not like us. He's not like us. You know, I might get mad at you, Candy, for something you did, and I might not talk to you for a month. Thank God God ain't that way. <laughs> Thank God God ain't that way. That he loves me in spite of myself. That he loves me no matter what I've done or what I'm doing. Somebody needs to hear that today. That no matter what I might present tensely be doing, he loves me anyway. And he cares about me and he's forever drawing me to him. He's forever wooing me to his heart. He wants me to be so much like him that he'll never give up on me. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me because he loves me that much. And all of my stupid decisions, James, and all of my craziness, he just stands there. And I'm the prodigal son. And the father sees me. And he sees you. And he says, come. Come on, kill the fatted calf. Get the robe. Get the ring. Amen. For my son, who's gone, is coming home. He's coming home. And for those of you mature saints who say, well... I never left the house. 
it was yours the whole time. It was yours all the time. You didn't have to go and spend all your money and come home. You had it the whole time. But for those that wander, for those that make mistakes, which I would dare say is probably in this congregation, 99.999. And I will make room for you. And, and so as I, as I prepare, maybe, maybe when they're coming to my house, I'll let them have the master bedroom and I'll sleep on the couch. Because after all, they're my guest. So I don't, I don't give them the corner or, or the basement or, or anything like that. I, I make them, I, I let them sleep in my bedroom. See, that's all God's asking. I, 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 I want to be there. I want to be the most important. I want to be the first. I, I don't want to be the second thought or the third thought. I, I want to know that every day of your life, when you, when you wake up in the middle of the night, you, you're not thinking about, can I go on social media? And, and, and when you wake up in the middle of the night, do you have me on your mind? And when you get up in the morning, could you set your clock just 10 minutes early? Just 10 minutes that you can open up your Bible and you can pray. Just 10 minutes. That's, I don't need a whole lot. I just want something. It's early in the morning I'll seek thee. Can I just make little sacrifices that will make big impact? Oh, I'm talking to somebody today. Just, just little sacrifices. And God, I'm on my way to work, and instead of listening to a 102 jams or whatever it is, I turn it to K Love. Oh, or I get my YouTube app out and, and I listen to some good, encouraging word. Why? I'm making room. I'm making room. I love that, that part. Your ways are better, because your ways are better. Because he knows, he knows what I don't see. The Bible said I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet it's not I. But it's Christ on the inside of me. So don't you get some prideful thought when you walk up to people and say, Well, I feel the glory on you. Oh, you, you. It's, it's not about you anyway. Because without him, you are nothing. I'm going to say that one more time. Without him, you are nothing. And you can never be nothing until you have him. Somebody asked me a few weeks ago, they said, what's the point in Christianity if I'm still going to have all these problems? I said, oh, I got your answer. I, I, know, I, I know what the point is because, see, you without Christ, you have nobody to go to. We myth with Christ, I've got my answer. I, I've got somebody that's going to help me. I, I got a group of people that are like I am that I can go and they can encourage me and they can speak life unto me. So I have something you don't have. I got peace and passion all understanding. I got something on the inside of me that keeps me going when all hell is coming out against me. There's something. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want. Whatever Jesus today. Whatever Jesus today. Your ways are better. Your ways are better. The Bible told me to take up my cross. You know what my cross may be? All of our crosses are different. You know, maybe you, you're coming out of a lifestyle of drugs and, and, and there you are. Your cross might be you got to forsake all those, all those other friends that are going to pull you back into a lifestyle of drugs. Maybe you running and ramping every Saturday night and clubbing and hopping and, and your cross is I take on Jesus and I have to push myself away from the people that are clubbing. Jesus, I take up your cross. I make that room in my heart. Every decision. Can I ask you a question? What's the last decision you made? Was it a God decision or a your decision? 
or mama decision or friend's decision or some prophet's decision. Whose decision? Was it yours? Because it's so easy to listen to people. You know, I go, to, I go to Pastor Melissa, and I'm like, blah, 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 blah. Well, I think you ought to do this, and I think you ought to do that. Oh, that's a good idea. Let me go do that. Do we not do that? I know you meet and talk with you, sure. But what is God saying, Grace? What is God saying to do, Vivian? What is the Spirit of the Lord leading you and prompting you? See, that's how you make room in your heart for Him. Because His ways are better. See, I always say there's three wills of God. The good, the acceptable, and the perfect will. And I mean, you know, I think God is like, well, that's, that's good. That's not the perfect one, but that's good. And then there's those times you do things and God says, I didn't really ordain that. I'll bless you because I love you. Acceptable. But then, there, it, then there's that perfect will. God, what is your perfect will? I want to be slapped, dab right in the middle of the perfect will of God. God, what are you saying? Where to go, what to do, how to do it, when to do it, why to do it. God, that I have peace in my heart, joy in my step. Amen. Your ways are better, Lord. Your ways are better. Your ways are better. Can I get that through you today? Your, His ways are better. His ways. Yet why are we always searching uh, they, the, the song, searching for love in all the wrong places? Why, why are you searching for answers in all the wrong places? Because His ways are better. Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he, he took bread, he took the cup. But then right after that, he goes, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he pulls his three closest confidants on the inner court with him, on the inside of the, uh, the garden. And then Jesus leaves them there and he says, I'm going deeper. See, there's always levels of people. There's the disciples that didn't get to go in. Then there's the end that didn't get to go further. I'm talking to you. But Jesus said, would you stay here and pray? I'm going to go further. Guys, did you know you can go further? You know in this Christian walk you can get deeper? Did you know more of your heart can get sold out to God the longer you do this thing? Remind me where I am in just a minute. Can I say this to you? It's a process. You know, everybody wants to, to be Benny Hinn or Creflo Dollar in a minute. It's a process. It's a process of doing stuff right, ma making wrong decisions, making worse decisions, <laughs> making better decisions, missing it, fixing it. God help me. It's a process. We have to work the process. I'm 43 years old in the Lord. I know I don't look that old. Praise the Lord. But I still learn stuff every day. I still, I still make mistakes, Pastor Billy. I still do stuff. But I'm quick to repent. God, I'm sorry I had that bad thought. God, I'm, I'm sorry I snapped at the Walmart girl. Because your ways are better. And so Jesus, thank you. And so Jesus, he says, stay right here and pray. And Jesus goes on in deep. You know what Jesus does? He says, God, uh, I don't really want to go through this. Come on, this is my interpretation. I, I, don't, I don't think it's my time. But, you know, and he's praying. And the Bible says his sweat was as great drops of blood. And, I mean, he's praying and he's asking God. And he's like, I don't, I don't want to. But God, nevertheless, would you remember those words? Nevertheless. Not my will, but yours be done. He comes back out to his faithful three, and they're sleeping. Don't be caught sleeping when God's given you a word. Somebody didn't catch that. Don't be caught sleeping. When God has a word for you. Jesus told him, stay here and pray. Stay here and pray. And they stayed there and slept. Don't be sleeping on God's watch. We can be sleeping on God's watch. Your ways are better. Your ways are better. And Jesus comes out and he said... It's time. 
today, if I don't get anything else across to you, will you make room for him today? For those of you that need titles, my title is Let Go and Let God. Let go and let God. Today, if, if we could just get past all the mistakes, all the hurt, all the pain. If we could just get past shame. Did you know shame doesn't come just because of something you did, but many times because of something someone's done to you. Remember Tamar in the Bible? She was raped by, was it her stepbrother? Natural brother, stepbrother? If you keep reading, all of a sudden Tamar's no more. The shame, the shame that she endured. She didn't ask for it, but it happened to her. Maybe you were raped as a child. Maybe you were molested. Men and women, men and women. And the shame of that thing prevents you from, from, from uh, letting down the walls. But his ways are better. He can heal you. He can set you free. He can make it to you as if it never happened. If you'll just make room. I bet every one of us could be on Jerry Springer. I would have said Oprah. She used to do that in her early days. She changed her, yeah. But she, but but Jerry Springer is. It is ninety nine percent that this child is. My God, jeez, the drama. But guys, can we not? Have all of us not had some type of childhood drama that we couldn't stand up and say, I can be on that show. I can tell my story. Uh, my family going to hate me, but I'll tell it. <laughs> right? But do you know he can heal you so completely? He can heal your heart uh, just in the midst of his hand so intensely that that thing can leave your life as if you never knew it was there. Because you're always better. Your ways are better, and I will make room. But see, you got all that, you got all that hidden, right? All the hurt. And some of you, you didn't get sexually abused, but verbally. Come on, verbally. Neglect. They never came to a ball game. They never encouraged me. They never supported me. Come on, you got a story. What's your story? And you got it tucked away somewhere down here in the junk drawer of your heart. And you don't tell nobody and you don't show. Come on, y'all know. Anybody in the house beside me got a junk drawer? The rest of y'all lying. You are lying. <laughs> five or six. Billy said, no, I don't have a junk drawer. We have five or six. I can testify to that too. Before we moved, I had a junk room. Hallelujah. Somebody say hoarder. Uh, I had to break that spirit. Amen. That was hard. But it, anyway, another story for another day. Uh, junk room. You not, Shut up, Isaac. Isaac. See, Isaac helped me clean up on the move. You know stuff that I'm going to have to bribe you. Amen. <laughs> Isaac said more than one junk room. Sometimes it is what it is. You live in a house 27 years, you watch what will happen. You'll have a junk room too. Junk rooms, <laughs> drawers. <laughs> so maybe in your heart, you, you got a junk room. You're like, God, I don't want, I don't, you know. And y'all know what you do? When people come over, what do you do? Shut the door. <laughs> you shut the door. And that's what people have done. To, to God, you know, God, every area but that one area. Anything you want, God, but that one area. I'll never, I had this girl tell me one day, she said, I will never forgive him for what he did to me. I said, sweetheart, if you don't forgive him, you're going to be sick the rest of your life. You're going to have trouble the rest of your life. She said, how could I ever forgive him? I said, you've got to forgive him by faith. Right, he, was, he had died. I said, write him a letter. Go out to the grave. Stick it in the ground. But forgive him because that's part of your junk room that if you don't give it 
to God, it stays messy. And messy people mess on people. Hurting people hurt people. Bleeding people bleed on people. And I will make room for you. God, to take, take that messy drawer, that junk room, and God, heal me today. My husband and I got married. I just, I feel this is the second prompting, so I'm going to tell you. Uh, when we got married, I, I was a mess. Uh, the fact, I guess it was good we didn't date but three months because uh, <laughs> he might have run. <laughs> but, but I suffered with the spirit of rejection. Almost all my life, I just, uh, the enemy, y'all know, I don't have to tell you every detail, but you know how the enemy does. And then when one thing happens, then what the enemy does is he compounds. And so everything that happens in your life becomes a spirit of rejection. I ask you, do you want to go out and eat? And you say, no, you just rejected me. Bye-bye, I'll never ask you again. I ask you, can I borrow $5? And you said, no, I'm not ever asking you a thing again. Go away. That, that's what we do. The spirit of rejection will push people away. You just say no or you just don't agree or, or whatever. So I suffered with that all, all my life. And a lot of dynamics because of, of that. And I don't have time to go in that today or we'd be here at 2 o'clock. We become pastors. One of the hardest things in life, if you're already suffering rejection, is to become a pastor. Because people walk away from you all the time. People come and go. People here and there. And I'm like, God, you put me in a position that's almost impossible. And he said, but I want you healed. Well, you're going to have to do something because these situations are too deep. Come on. Is it deep in your heart? Is it bread? So I remember we were having a, a camp meeting. I was sitting, as a matter of fact, Tricia, I was sitting exactly where you're sitting. And Pastor J.B. Whitfield was here. And I was sitting there and I was praying. I said, God, if you could just heal this hurt in my heart. I'm tired of hurting. Anybody tired of hurting? You're, you're tired of the rejection. You're tired of the pain. You're tired of the shame. Come on, you're tired of the anxiety. You're tired of waking up at night and can't sleep. You're, you're tired of those feelings of depression and discouragement. And you're tired of those things. And you're like, God, if you could just heal the pain, I could be okay if you just heal the pain. Maybe you're taking medicine right now because of the pain. Some of you drink because of the pain. Some of you, you know, you do drugs because of the pain. And I was sitting there, I won't do any of that, but I was sitting on that front row. And I, God, if you'll just heal the pain so I can be free. And he didn't know. He didn't know. And he came straight down and he walked over to me. He knew nothing, April. Nothing, not a thing. And he laid his hands on me right there as I sat. I didn't get up. I didn't fall out. I didn't shake. I didn't. He just simply laid his hands on me. Something happened on the inside of me that changed me. Can I help you today? The power of Almighty God. I feel Him here right now. The power of Almighty God can change you. When medicine can't, when therapy can't, when counseling can't, the power of Almighty God can change you. He's the one that can free you. He's the one that that, that that anointing, when it comes in your life, it can make you strong. It can make you bold. You don't have to be loud to be bold. I know I'm loud. That's my personality. You know, can, can I just share something with you? Years ago, years, I mean like a lot of years ago, people would criticize me, Silas, because I was so loud. Another rejection. I would literally go home and cry. And I'd pray and I'd say, why did you make me this way? Why couldn't you have made me different? Because if you made me different, then people would love me. 
Why can't I be like so and so? Why can't I'm a, uh, why can't I be like Christine Kane or you know or or Joyce Meyer? I said, why did you make me loud and bold? I even talk. When I talk to you, I'm loud. I don't. It. And the Lord said to me, he said, I made you wonderfully and fearfully and creatively. Can I help you today? Don't let people try to put you in a box that they tried to make for you. Don't today. Don't. If you're loud, you're loud. If you're quiet, you're quiet. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. What matters is the power of the Holy Spirit. And He can minister to you in a whisper. And He can minister to you in a yell. I might need a yell. You might need a whisper. But I will make room for you. To do whatever you want. To do whatever you want. Oh, Lord, I will make room. Come on. To do whatever you want. To do whatever you want. To take off the chains. What's that? My religion. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Now and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to do, to do whatever you want to. Oh, I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. So what is it today what is that thing that you've got to let go and let God that he has his way we have our own plans our own thoughts our own ambitions how we think things should go how we think things should be you know in our life I'm gonna be married by 25 I'm gonna have children by 27 I'm gonna have me a good job by 30 <laughs> right I mean, we have our own thoughts and plans. I love Jeremiah. It says, I know the thoughts I have towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, thoughts of good, thoughts of an expected end. His thoughts. So, God, what are you wanting to do in my life right now? What is the thing that you're holding on to? And God is telling you to let go. What is the thing that's in your heart that we got to clean out today? Let, let's not go another day. Let's not go another minute. Let, let's, let, let's make sure God has all. See, Lord means everything. Not part. Not half. I See, I'm not a part-time Christian. Did you hear me? I'm not a part-time Christian. I love Him every day, all day. I, I, I talk to him in Walmart. God bless you. Better talk to him in Walmart. I talk to him in Walmart. I talk to him everywhere I go and everything I do. God, what is it you want? I want you to have everything. This is not partial. This is not part. I don't want a discounted God. A great value, God. Thank you. Give me a God that's 100. Give me a God that's all. Give me, let me sell out to him so much. I love Smith Wigglesworth. He would go down and sit on a park bench. He'd get up in the middle of the night and go sit on a park bench and just sit there. And somebody would run up to him and said, the, I, I think you can lead me to Jesus. That's how I want to be. I want to be when I walk in to get my hair done. That Jerry feels it. I want to walk when I when I walk by you, not me. 
I can't give this. I can't do this. I, I, don't, I don't own this. But when I walk by you, you say, whew, could you pray for me? You don't even know me. What do you mean can I pray for you? You don't even know me. Oh, there's something. I feel something. I feel God. Perry Stone was telling a story that he was in India. And he was with a colleague and he was up preaching. And every time the man of God said the name of Jesus, a miracle happened. Every time a miracle happened. So the next night, the people of the village that were angry and did not, did not want him preaching, they told him, we're going to burn you at the stake tomorrow night as soon as you mention that name. He comes on, on the grounds. They've got the firewood in the back warming it up. No, I don't know about you. <laughs> I might have been like, oh, my stomach hurts. <laughs> I got to go to the bathroom somewhere. His interpreter was so scared that his interpreter stood behind the stage and interpreted. And he got up and he began to speak. And he said the name Jesus and he knew when he said it. He said the name Jesus and all of a sudden off a man started screaming to the top of his lungs. He thought, I guess I'm in trouble. The interpreter comes running around the stage. He didn't know what was happening. He said, what, what's going on? Do we need to leave? He said, no, no, you don't know what's happened. He said, the leader of the pack, the leader of this community, he said, the man that was going to burn you at the stake, when you said the name of Jesus tonight, his blinded eyes opened. His blinded eyes opened. Can I tell you? That's not the ten disciples or, or nine outside in the garden. That's not the three inside. That is on the inner court. That is when you get to this place right here. If you kill me, you kill me. It, come on, if you, if you spit on me, you spit on me. But I'm making all, my whole heart, I'm making all room for him. Nothing, nothing left unturned. Nothing left unsaid. Nothing left undone. I'm telling you what God has started. He will finish. Are you hearing me today? What God has started in your heart today. He wants to complete it. All the anger out. All the bitterness. The root. Let's get it out today. Did you know you're, you're a product right now of all the junk that's happened to you? But today, healing abides. Healing abides. Would you stand up on your feet? I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, oh, and I will make room for you, oh, to do whatever you want to. Do it. Come on, just a little stronger. I will make room. Come on, tell him. I will make room for you today, Lord. To do whatever you want to. Whatever it is, Lord. Whatever you want to. Whatever you want to do, Lord. And I will make room for you, yes. To do whatever you want to. Whatever you want to. Every, everybody praying just right here. Because this is private. This is private. This is between you and the Lord. And maybe you're here today. No matter how young or how old. And you say, Pastor Sharon, I, I got some stuff. I need God to heal that junk drawer in my heart. Some stuff's happened. And I don't want to talk about it. But I know God can heal me. I know he can forgive me. I know he can, I can move on. And lack of a better way to say it, God will heal your junk drawer today. He'll heal your mess. He'll heal your pain and your hurt today. And if that's you today, would you just slip up your hand and slip it back down? Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So you don't know who around you has raised their hand. But I'm going to ask you this right now. There's somebody around you that needs prayer. And I'm going to ask you, you leaders, or those of you that feel compelled, I want you to open your eyes for a minute and just look and say, God, who do you want me to go pray for? Who do you want me to go pray for? Come on, look. There's somebody, leaders, and begin to move. Begin to move. Begin to find somebody. Begin to find. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. Hallelujah. Come on, move. Move. Come on, move. Move. You don't know what they need. I'm going to pray from here, but I'm going to release the power of God. Pastor April, please get out and move. Pastor Daryl, move. Pray. Go find somebody. Jenny, go find somebody. Go find somebody. Just find somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. James, come right here. Pray right here. I just, I just feel that. Come on, keep going. Keep going. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just pray. Just pray. I'm not going to say who lifted their hand. God knows. Hallelujah. But you know what? We don't depend on somebody that, that's praying for us. We look to God. We look to Jehovah. Hallelujah. Come on, Lord. I give it to you today. I give it to you today. I give it away today, God. I don't know what to do, and I don't know how to do it, but I give it to you today. I give it to you today, right now, right now, right now. Right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. I will make room. I make room for you right now. I get rid of my junk drawer. I get rid of my junk drawer. I get rid of my junk drawer today, God. I get rid of my junk drawer today, God. I get rid of my junk Your ways. Your ways, God. I take all the hurt out. I take all the pain out. I release it today. I let it go today, Lord. God, I can't do it, but you can. I can't fix it, God, today, but you can. God, your ways are better. Come on, somebody today. Your ways are better, Lord. Your ways, God. Your paths. Your plans, God. Your ways are better. Your ways are. I give it to you. I hand it to you. I, I release it today. I release it today. Somebody just release it. I release it. The power of God. The power of God. I release it today. I release it today. Your ways are better. Your ways are better. Your ways are better. I release it. I release it now. I release it now. Oh, I release it now. Your ways, your ways, your ways, your ways. I will make room for you. Come on, let that be your prayer right now. To do whatever you want to. Lord, today in my life, whatever you want to, Lord, and I will make room. For you right now Lord I give it all away I give it to you 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 to shake off the chains shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my come this part your way surrender when you when you pray like that that's surrender I surrender I, su I give myself away thank you Jesus I give myself away oh I give myself away see we made room for him now myself now that I've made room I give all to him today I give myself now I'm gonna pray one last prayer before I turn it off maybe you're watching me by television 
Maybe you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Or maybe you're in this congregation and, and you say, I just hadn't sold out to him, but I need to. I need that Jesus you talked about today. I need the peace. I need joy. I need answers. Are you praying, Christians? If you're in this congregation and you say, Pastor Sharon, I, I need to ask Jesus in my heart today. Would you just raise your hand and put it back down? If that's you today. Maybe you're, maybe you're watching online. So let's say this prayer out loud to help everyone. Would you say it with me? Would you repeat it? Say, Father God, today I give myself to you. I believe that Jesus died on a cross and he rose again so that I could be forgiven of all my sin. I receive that forgiveness. And today I give myself to you in Jesus' name. Now, friend, if you're watching us by television, Please call that number on that screen. We want to get information to you. I, I got a message yesterday, and they simply said, I, I came to know Jesus. Send me information. How much is a soul worth? It's priceless. This year, I keep saying, we're winning this world one person at a time. Why? Because every soul matters today. Your ways are better. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. One more time. Would you just raise your... Now let's praise him. Get, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Now, many healings are taking place here and online, on television. But right here, as, as someone just prayed for you, many healings, emotional and physical, they're taking place right now. Chrissy, the Lord said to tell you that you received two major healings, one an emotional healing from way back. I mean, this goes from way back, but today you're free of that thing. The other, there's a physical. I don't know that you know this or if you've been to a doctor. I have no clue. Don't need to know. But there's some physical situation. God said, I've healed it today. Don't worry about it. I've healed it today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Great, great healings are taking place. Whew. The Lord said some, some emotional healings that go back years. You, you know, that's the things we hold on to. You know, they hurt me. And you remember the day, and you remember what clothes they had on and what clothes you had. Come on now, I'm guilty too. And you said, I'll never forgive them. Oh, yes, you will. You forgiving them is not for them, it's for you. So you can go on to, to greater things. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. The word of the Lord came to me prophetically several times over the years about something that would happen in this house that would shake this city and shake this region. And each time, and I would share them with the congregation. You can go ahead and be seated. And, and each time, I would, I would release what, you know, prophetic words. We, the Bible says, I know in part, I only see in part. I prophesy in part. We don't have the whole picture. And so we just release what we see. And, and every time the Lord would say to me, well, this is coming, but it's not, it's not for then. Not for that time. Some things are time-released. You get a word in one season, but it's released in another. Come on now. And, and each time, it's been this, and each time I get the word, it was bigger. The prophecy was bigger as, as, as far as what was going to happen than it was prior. And then this week, the Lord reminded me of all those prophetic words. And then he... He cut the light on. 
Just like, did you notice uh, when, past, when Apostle Sharon got up and the lights came on? I don't think I've ever seen this place this clear. Thank you, Craig. We can see what needs to be painted now. <laughs> now we see we need new carpet. We didn't know that before. Praise the, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See how good looking y'all are. But this week, it's like the light came on, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said this. He said, son, people are asking, what's happening at the Life Church? What's happening at the Life Church? And he said to me, son, do you want to know my answer? I said, yes, sir. That's the only one I'm concerned about. He said the word revival and outpouring of my spirit. And then it was like, it was like Craig came in and cut the lights on. It was like I saw. And in my flesh, I saw myself prophesying, it's coming. And the Lord corrected me and said, no, it's here. It started. It's already started. It's already started. And, th and this really brought peace to me. And he said, this revival, that will be a regional revival that will start in this church. See, God's called me and my wife to go around and start fires. I'm a fire starter for God. Everywhere I go, I said, God, use me to start a fire. I want to make people so uncomfortable they run to an altar. I want to make people so uncomfortable that they get more of God. And he said, this, this will be a regional. He said, I'm raising up hubs all over the nation, revival centers all over the nation. And he said, this church in Danville shall be and is a revival center, a hub for outpouring of the Spirit of God. But he said, it won't stay in this church. It's going to spread to other churches because this needs to be everywhere. You know, sometimes, you know why sometimes great revivals start, but they stop? Because the church it started in tried to put a hub on that thing and make it just about them. But we serve a God that's not just about you, but he's for all humanity. The greatest days of this ministry have just begun. And the Lord said the 34 years were to prepare us and get us ready for this outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Then he said this. He said, son, no man, no apostle, no prophet, no pastor, no teacher, and no evangelist will get the glory for this move of God. Now you think about that, and that will make you run right there. It'll start with the children and the young people. Waves and waves of children and teenagers. But it'll run through all the ways of the senior saints. And the children will lead this move of God. But the senior saints will set the example for the young people. I saw chairs all over this place. I mean, just chairs, chairs. I see seating on the platform. I see stadium seating up top. I see multiple services. And we already have a Friday night service, and we have a Sunday morning service. I see a Saturday night service. I see multiple services on Sunday, and I see a Sunday night service. But there won't be the same person ministering in all those services. Something's happening in the parking lot. I keep seeing that. It's unusual. It's like, it's like church going on out there while church is going on in here. And then I'm going to say something going to blow your mind, and, and you're going to think this don't sound spiritual. But God talks your language. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. Told you it wasn't going to sound spiritual. 
One of my favorite shows at Christmas since I was about that little was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And if you've seen, if there's only one classic. I mean, I think Burl Ives, who y'all don't even know who he is, he, he narrates it. He was a singer. He's been gone for years. And there was an island on that show called the Island of Misfit Toys. Toys that everybody else had given up on. Toys that Santa Claus didn't take to the kids because they, they didn't fit in and they were broken and they were damaged and, and the world and everybody had given up on them. God said, I'm going to make this church the island of misfit toys. And I'm going to bring people in here that everybody else has given up on. I'm going to bring the prostitutes in and the drug addicts in and the abused children in, the ex-convicts in. I'm going to bring them into this place where the love of God is going to wrap their arms around them and see them healed and restored by the power of God. The people that other churches gave up on and other churches said, we don't want folks like you. My God. Every ethnic group. I, and listen, elders. Pastor Joseph, Pastor Billy, listen to this. I see a Hispanic service, and it needs to start soon. You ought to live where I live in Florida. I'm a minority. Hispanic service. God will tell you where, when, how. I see services in this move of God going all the time. It's like church will be going on all the time. So no matter what shift you work, you can get in church. I'm talking about every night having church. Come on now. But it's not by man. It's by the Holy Spirit. Now, isn't it significant that God would release this right now? great outpouring of the Spirit of God that will become nationally known. Not because we want it to be nationally known, but how many know there's been revivals over the years that break out and they're so big and they're so strong and so many lives have changed that the networks get a hold to it. Well, it's time the networks get a hold to what God's doing and not what the devil's doing. That's what's wrong with the networks now. They're run by devils and all they talk about is what the devil's doing. Great outpouring, and it's happening now. Greatest days in the history of this ministry, and it'll last until the rapture of the church. Yeah. It's sitting something that's just going to last for a season. What? Listen, when God's really in it, it's not temporary. Are you receiving this? It's time. God said it's time. Right now, it's time. It's time. When you come in, if you don't get here early, somebody's going to get your seat. Well, how many know it's not your seat? Just find another seat. It might get to where you have to bring your own seat. Hallelujah. Great outpouring. That will be marked by signs and wonders and miracles. And truly a house of healing. And everything that's happened over the years has prepared us. You thought it was manifestation, but it was preparation. You ain't seen anything yet. In the last capital of the confederacy God said I've chosen a place where there will not be any prejudice of any kind any kind I don't care if you drive a tricycle to church or a Rolls Royce you're welcome in this place I don't care if you live in a mansion or a hut 
The same Jesus died for all of us. Come on now. Black, white, red, yellow, Hispanic, Korean, Chinese, Japanese. You mention it. You name it. Because when we get to heaven, there's not going to be sections. If you can't love me here, you're going to have a hard time getting over there. It's not about are you loud. It's not about are you quiet. Why is it all the quiet people want to be loud and all the loud people want to be quiet? Do you ever notice you always want something you're not? I just learned years ago, I'm just going to be me. I know I rub some people wrong, but if I rub you wrong, turn around. It'll get right eventually. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, that revival is breaking forth now. This church is going to be just fine. In fact, that's not even the word for it. Better. Greater. The Holy Ghost will get the glory. I've noticed this over the years. Anytime there's a place where God gets the glory, there are no limits. There's always some man wants to take it and run with it. I, I'm just, I'm getting out of the way. We're getting out of the way. Yes, we're praying. My wife and I, we're going to be coming in. We're going to be coming in once a month at least and ministering here. Praise God. If y'all allow us to do that, we're going to come in here once, at least once a month. We, we're leaving for Florida at 5 a.m. in the morning to go back, but then we'll be back in May. And we've got great leaders. And I'm telling you, this church is so blessed. We've got great board of elders and board of directors who hear from heaven and hear from God. And, and in the church, we got Pastor Joseph, executive pastor. We got Pastor Billy and Melissa, uh, Pastor Joseph and Tr Pastor Tricia. And we got Pastor Will uh, with the youth and, and, uh, and so many more, Pastor Darrell and, and April. And, uh, and we're going to put together a team. And, and you know who's going to minister? Who the Holy Ghost says is going to minister. And we're just gonna we we're just gonna seek God. So when somebody asks you, "What's happening at the Life Church?" What are you gonna tell them? Revival and outpouring of the Spirit of God. I'm telling you, you're gonna hear about it. It's regional. What I love about it the most, no man will get the glory. How does it feel to be the island of misfit toys? <laughs> Some of you ain't never seen that. You're going to go on YouTube and look up Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You got anything? Yeah, come on. You know, in, in a lot of the bigger cities, the churches, they have multiple, multiple um, services. I remember asking somebody one day, I was like, who's the pastor there? And she said, oh, I don't know. She said, I go to the 10 o'clock service. That's Pastor John. And I said, well, what do you mean? She says, well, pa uh, Pastor Patrick preaches at the 8 a.m., but I like Pastor John at 10. And they got another one at 12. I think, I think that's, I thought, wow. And I thought, wow, wow. And so when he was talking, and he was talking about those multiple services, that's what I could see. I thought, wow, people used in their gifts. Pe God opening doors that were all one body for the same purpose. Amen for the same purpose. So I, I, I ditto. Yes, God's got great things in store. Get ready. Don't miss your moment. Are you hearing me? Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your place. Don't miss your call. God has your name included. Amen. Get excited, man. Get excited. This is, these are the days we prayed about. These are the days the prophets of old prophesied about. God wants to use every person in this church. And let me say this prophetically. Some of you are new to the church. You're going to begin to be leading this whole thing. You're going to begin to lead in this revival. You don't have to be here 34 years for God to use you. If it's your first time, I believe God wants to use you. Hallelujah. So we celebrate what God's doing in this house. We thank God for all of you. You know, I see uh, Sister Patsy Glass is here today, and I don't, and, and she, we go way back. I mean, we go way back. I mean, we, we, her and Nancy Hunley came over on the ark with, with me and my wife. I mean, we, not, we're not old. That's not what I'm saying. No, but, we, but we've got a lot of history together. 
And, uh, and I believe that's another thing. God said, I'm going to start bringing some people back. I'm going to start bringing some people back. Come on, I'm going to start bringing some people back. God's moving. It's great. It's, I mean, you know, it's great to be in the kingdom of God. So we celebrate what God is doing. Get ready. Get excited. Every service you come to this church, you come with expectation of miracles and supernatural. And don't you ever think you got something that's too hard for God. Don't ever think you're going through something that's too hard for God. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. He's just looking for somebody that believes him. Praise God. Announcements, announcements. Pastor, hallelujah. Okay, don't go anywhere. They're going to do the drawing in just a minute, okay? Well, each week keeps getting better and better. Yes. And we are better together. So you don't want to miss not even one week, okay? Because we're family. And if we have new people today, we want to welcome you home. We've been waiting for you. And if you step back to that brown table when service is over, we have a free gift for you. And it's good. You're going to love it. Okay. Well, and yes. Praise the Lord. So if my uh, if the BSMM team would just get ready, um, they have done a raffle, and we said we were going to do the drawing today. Um, all of this will go to our local outreach. Let, let me just tell you a little bit about what we do, because there's no way every Sunday people can get up and tell you, but every week, uh, Barbara, you and your team stand up for a minute. Ms. Barbara, Alice, uh, Johnny, Ann, did she leave? She was here. Um, they cook for the homeless shelter every week and take it down there. Uh, every other week we get, yes, amen. And sometimes she sends me those pictures and I'm like, send me a plate, amen. Um, yes, and people come by the church. We just had a call the other day. I was in the office, somebody saying I needed food. So if, you're, if you didn't get a ticket yet, if you'll raise your hand real quick, it's $5. We got to make this quick. I got a few people that want a ticket, but we got to do it quick so we can go home. I got one over there. Raise your hand. One right here. One back there. Get your name on it real quick, and y'all bring the pot. It's a $300, $150, or $50 door price um, for you for helping us support our local outreach. Our local outreach. Thank you. This does not go to us. This does not go to a person. Um, our local outreach. Amen. Uh, I need some girls to help them, Jenny, if you don't mind going. So anybody else real quick, real quick. Hallelujah. And then y'all bring the pot up here. Thank you, Lord. Y'all get it done quickly and bring me the pot so we can. Thank you, Jesus. God is good all the time. Praise God. All right. You got, you got 30 more seconds, and it's done. Huh? She's shaking her head no. Uh, Y'all. Why? If they got a number, huh? Just put an X or something on it. That way they know. No? Wait a minute. She's got an idea. Y'all hold on. Okay, all right. That's you. Okay, okay. Due to hiccups, she wants me to draw a little bit later. So uh, get your tickets now, and then we'll draw maybe about three o'clock or so this afternoon, because they've got some behind the scenes stuff they got to get done. I guess write names on tickets and all that. Okay? Huh? I, I don't know. You know, they just tell me what to do, and I just did it. So you know. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Did we miss anything, Pastor Joseph? Why don't you come and close us out? All right. Well, once again, if you're one of our first-time guests, we'd love to meet you back there at the back so we can get to know you on a first-name basis and help you take that next step. And uh, as we go, we always say this, victory belongs to you and best is yet to come. Lord bless you as you go.